Hi guys, welcome to Kid Soup. I think we're on number um number five. Yay! We are still stuck in our homes, and I am still missing you. But I hope you've had a good week. I hope you've been enjoying this beautiful weather. I hope you've been enjoying as the birds sing, as the plants grow. Today, I get to be all excited because we are talking about the gift of the helper. So let's start today with our game. Let's do our kid soup game. Remember, you stand up, find a bit of space. Get ready, limber yourself up, jump on. I'm going to do three times the following. You have got to make one of the kids' soup shapes. There are four shapes. There is tomato, there is chicken, there is minestrone, and there is oxtail. Now you do one of those shapes when I turn round. And when I jump back round, if you're doing the same shape as me, I'm afraid you don't get a point. But if you're doing one of the other ones, you do get a point. And let's see whether you can get three points today, or actually as many points as you can. Okay, remember there are four shapes, tomato, chicken, minestrone, and oxtail. Right, let's give it a go. So if you stand up, make sure you've got some space. Start thinking of your shape, because I'm gonna turn around. When I've counted down from five, I'm gonna come round and you need to be doing your shape. No cheating, okay? Here we go. I wonder what they'll do. I wonder what they'll do. I wonder what they'll do. Five, four, three, two, one. Get in your shape. <gasps> it's oxtail. Yay! If you were doing oxtail, I'm afraid you don't get a point. If you were doing one of the other shapes, you do. So try again. Here you go. Remember a different shape this time. All the same one. See if you can. Here we go. I wonder what they'll do. I wonder what they'll do. I wonder what they'll do. Five, four, three, two, one. Chicken. Are you doing chicken? No point, I'm afraid. If you were doing one of the others, me and a stroni, oxtail or tomato, you do. Last time, here goes. Get into your shape. Five. I wonder what they'll do. I wonder what they'll do. I wonder what they'll do. Five, four, three, two, one. Tomato! How many points did you get? You could have got three. No, not four. Three. How many did you get? Shout it out. Well done. Well, well done. So today, if you want to sit down now, Today I said we'd talk about the gift of the helper. Now, I don't know if you ever have this. When I was your age, and um, I remember there being a really big thunderstorm. There was lightning. And <laughs> I got quite scared. And, and I went to go and be with my parents. Because when I was near them, I, I, I felt a little bit more confident. And when I was, was on my own in my bedroom, I felt quite scared. Now, I don't know if you've had the same. It might be your parents, or it might be a big brother or sister, or your guardian, or your uncle or aunt, or, or a friend. But you might have had a situation that's made you scared. And actually, by being with them, it's made you feel better, more confident. It might have happened at school, it might have happened at home, it might have happened in the supermarket, on the football pitch, I don't know. Have a think about that. On your own, you felt a bit scared, but when you were with near that person, you just felt more confident. Do you know what? We are actually in good company. The disciples in the Bible, it tells us, when they were with Jesus, Although Jesus was saying some stuff that was quite challenging to people, thousands of people, well, there would be crowds often around him. So although the authorities didn't like what he was saying, they couldn't do very much about it. And the disciples, because they were with Jesus and that big crowd, felt and were a lot safer. A little bit like that lightning, a 
me, wanting to be my parent. When I could be with the person who gave me confidence and courage, I felt a lot better. But the disciples, when Jesus was crucified, they were left on their own and they were scared. If you read the Bible, it tells us they were hiding in a little room. They were scared because no longer did they have Jesus to protect them. So they felt alone. The funny thing is, Jesus has told them what would happen. He said, if you love me and keep my commands, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. When Jesus had gone, he was, Jesus was going to ask the Father and he was going to send a helper. Not, not second best, not one less than Jesus. The Greek actually, the word for helper there means someone equal to Jesus. Do you remember? God, three in one, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was going to go to be with the Father. But he was going to ask and send the Holy Spirit to be with the disciples, to be with you and me, to help us. Jesus, remember we did about the Lamb of God, that that perfect sacrifice made a way for our sins to be forgiven and for us to be put right with God so that he could send his Holy Spirit to live inside us. It's a bit like in the Old Testament, the, 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 they, would, they would purify and they would get things ready and clean in the temple. Jesus, through his sacrifice of blood, made a way by which we can be clean so God can live in us. The Spirit can come. That promised helper can be with us. And you might ask, why is that important? Well, actually, it tells us in Acts. In Acts 1, verse 8, is Jesus, this is after he's been crucified, but before he's gone to heaven, he says, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on. You will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We will receive the Holy Spirit. The disciples and us now will receive the Holy Spirit so that we can be God's witnesses. We can speak of Jesus, not just where we are, not just in Jerusalem, but in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. We can be God's witness to the world. So that's why Pentecost is such an exciting time. It is God coming to live inside us. So if you want to read about Pentecost, I would really go find your kid's Bible, go and find your parents' Bible, go and find, just read in Acts too. It's an amazing story. It's one that is just so full of power, but also full of how God seeks and wants to work through his people to change this world. So I thought I would read it and act it out to you in a bit of a story. This was written by a, a modern day author called Bob Hartman, but it's got some actions and it's just a retelling of that, the first time that the Holy Spirit came to God's disciples and that gift of the helper was given. So do you want to try with me? Perhaps, actually, yeah, stand up if you want to. Now you can stay sitting, but the actions are, when I say, make the wind blow, you go, Make the fire glow, you go, <laughs> take the words from your lips, reach up and touch as though you're touching God's lips and put them on our lips and speak them out to the whole world. So we're going to do wind blowing, <laughs> fire glowing, <laughs> take the words from your lips and put them on our lips. So touch up to there and then touch down to here and speak them out to the whole world. So here you go. This is the story of that first Pentecost where the Holy Spirit filled the disciples. They're in Jerusalem, they're hiding a little upstairs. The Spirit comes and 
all the people walking outside hear about a glorious God. Let's, let's, let's do the story together. Here we go. Jesus' friends were watching and praying, praying for the present that he had promised, praying together in the city of Jerusalem, praying at the Feast of Pentecost. Jesus' friends were watching and praying when all of a sudden their prayers were answered. They heard the roar of a rushing wind and the tongues of fire lick their heads, make the wind blow, make the fire glow. Take the words from your lips and put them on our lips and speak them out to the whole of the world. Jesus' friends were watching and praying when the Holy Spirit came upon them, filled them, thrilled them, and spilled right out of them with words they did not know. What's going on? asked the people of Jerusalem. What can this possibly mean? These are plain Galileans, ordinary folk, speaking words that could never be learned. Make the wind blow. Make the fire glow. Take the words from your lips and put them on our lips and speak them out to the whole of the world. We come from the north, the south and the east. We come from all over the world. Yet we all understand the things that they say as they tell out the wonders of God. But some of the crowd were not so impressed. Some even said they were drunk. And that's when Peter, Jesus' friend, stood up and put them right. Make the wind blow, make the fire glow. Take the words from your lips and put them on our lips and speak them out to the whole of the world. Filled with wine, he said, not likely, but we're filled with something else. Filled with God's own Holy Spirit, the power the prophets promised. And how did this happen, asked Peter? I'll tell you plain and true. This is the gift of Jesus the Messiah, whom you killed just six weeks ago. Make the wind blow. Make the fire glow. Take the words from your lips and put them on our lips and speak them to the whole of the world. The people were sorry, sad and ashamed. And they cried, what can we do? Repent and be baptized, said Peter plainly, and this gift will come to you. And so the people repented. The people were baptized, 3,000 or so. And the word spread from there to the rest of Judea and on to the rest of the world. Make the wind blow. Make the fire glow. Take the words from your lips and put them on our lips and speak them out to the whole of the world. That's what happened that first Pentecost for the disciples where the Spirit filled them. Jesus had promised and the Father gave that gift of the Holy Spirit and so that they received power when the Holy Spirit came on. They received, they, they were confident. They boldly spoke out. They'd been scared and now through the Spirit they were boldly speaking out about the wonders of God and so that they could not just be the witness to themselves in the room or to their little group of friends but they would be their witness in the whole of Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth and that Holy Spirit that gift of a helper is on offer to you and to me just the same way, when we repent, we say, Lord, I get stuff wrong and I want to follow your way. I want to follow how you have taught, Jesus taught. The Holy Spirit comes to be our helper, to be more like Jesus. It, it helps us to proclaim out the gospel, to tell the good news to the people we know. It helps us to speak out and do acts of love and kindness to those around us. Not just the people we like, to all of God's created people, which is everybody. That's how we can take 
the gospel and be a witness for Jesus to the ends of the earth. And what happened? That first Pentecost for the disciples has gone on ever since. It has gone on today, up until today, so we can be filled, and it will go on with future generations. So, have you ever experienced the Holy Spirit? That's my question. Would you like to? Would you like to have a helper from God who would live inside you and would help you to proclaim his message? If you do, that's brilliant. Should we pray for that? So we're going to put our hands together. You can close your eyes, not for any great reason. And then when I say, we're going to move our hands apart. So it, it means we have to be like those first disciples. It has to be what they taught. It actually, we need, we need to say, I love you, Lord. I'm going to keep your commandments. I'm going to turn from what I haven't done and move to you. And then that gift of the Holy Spirit can be given. So if you accept that Jesus is your Lord and save him, if you said, I don't want to do that stuff that's wrong, I want to do what is right in God's eye, then let's pray for the Holy Spirit. You ready? Here we go. Close your eyes. We say, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you that you promised a helper. Not second best. You promised the Holy Spirit. And Father, it's because of your sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb. But Father, that Holy Spirit can be given. So we move our hands apart, we put our hands like this, and we say, Heavenly Father, please pour out your Spirit on us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Help us proclaim your message your gospel your good news to the world not just where we are but to all the people we know father fill us with your spirit we pray in jesus name amen guys that's it for this week i hope you have a fantastic week if you prayed for the spirit to fill you why not go and tell one of your family chat to them about it but my prayer is you would be filled with the spirit and you would proclaim God's gospel to all the people that you meet. Not just in words, but also in acts, in gifts, in kindness. Here, let us be the hands and feet of God's love in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Go have fun, go enjoy, and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.